Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Brendan here, AKA Cliff Jumper, and we're back on uh, the R32 today with an interesting, we'll call it an old car problem. Although this has been a problem that has existed basically since the car was new. Not my car, I've never had this problem before and I bought the car new in 2004. But looking back at the forums and the history of others who have had the car, this has been a known issue since the car was new. So stay tuned and I'll tell you what it is and how we're gonna fix it. So it's smog time and I live in the great state of California, which has many, many smog laws and emissions are hard to pass here. So for those of you that say, well, just bypass the secondary air injection and code it out and then you don't have to worry about it. There is a visual inspection I would never pass if I did that, which is a problem. But I'm running into an interesting check engine light code and it's not your normal variety code. Um, although I am having issues with the secondary air injection passing its readiness, it's related to this secondary issue and that is a combination of the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. This is indeed a drive-by-wire throttle body and means that there's a stepping motor that controls it. There's all sorts of sensitive stuff in there. And when I was doing all of that work on this car, cleaning out the intake earlier and cleaning out all the junk that's been coming from the crankcase through this wonderful hose in through the throttle body and making, I'm sure, a giant mess inside the whole intake manifold, but it had gotten messy all the way out through the mass airflow sensor and into here. So there was just crud everywhere. So I cleaned out the mass airflow sensor as best I could and uh, in doing so may have introduced part of the problem. The other thing is I cleaned the throttle body, which in doing so may have introduced the other part of the problem. So the problem is that the sensor system is seeing a higher airflow than it expects at certain throttle body positions, which can be two things. One, I had the battery unhooked for about three months and anytime you unhook the battery in a drive-by wire system, you have to do a throttle body adaptation. I thought I had done that, but maybe I didn't. What did I do? You killed the car. Or maybe it didn't go correctly. So either way, I had to redo the throttle body adaptation. The other thing is though, the mass airflow sensor is original. It's the very first original one that came in the car I did clean it with the proper mass airflow sensor cleaner, but just because I did that doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's good. So I might have to take it out and give it another whirl, try to clean it again, and then, then maybe between that and the throttle body adaptation, that will keep that DTC code from coming back. It's weird, it's like a 17551 code or something like that. And so it's very, very specific to this problem. And if that code is in place, then the readiness for secondary air injection will not set. It'll just say unable to do it uh, or system not okay. It'll give you a weird code like that if you're looking at VCDS. So it's not actually the secondary air injection system. It's really the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor not jiving. So I've already reset that. Now let's go ahead and clean the mass airflow sensor one more time. To do that, we're going to very carefully undo this connector. You do that by pressing down on this, push in and then pull out and a little bit of wiggling and that should let this come off. I might need to use just a little bit of a convincer underneath it to wedge it off. It's a nice tight fit. I'm going to clean the connectors on that as well, but then it's just a couple of Phillips head screws that hold the mass airflow sensor in place. We can pop that out, clean it with a mass airflow sensor specific cleaner, let it dry, put it back in place, and we should be good to go. So we'll start with this. Again, I'm going to push in on this tab, push towards that to loosen it and then there we go and that comes off nicely so i'll put some 
uh, electronic connector cleaner in both sides of this. And then it's just a matter of the two Phillips head screws. And I should be able to reach that okay. I'm going to go for the harder to reach one first. Just to make sure I can get by in on it without stripping anything. And I may want to rotate this slightly because it's really kind of right up against this. I probably want to up a little bit more. So let's, let's loosen those hose clamps, rotate the whole thing a little bit. And here you can see the two Phillips head screws that need to come out. So they'll just come out and this whole thing pops right out of the place. And you can see it's still a little dirty. This is the important part right here, those wires. And yeah, they, have, they do have some crud on them still. So I am going to go ahead and get the mass airflow sensor cleaner and we're going to clean the heck out of this thing. There are a few different approaches here. This is the one that I rec rep recommend, CRC, Mass Airflow Sensor Cleaner. You don't want to just blast it with other kind of cleaners. Carb cleaner will screw up a lot of Mass Airflow Sensors. Do not use carb cleaner. All right, so right here on those wires, that's what we want to get clean. And inside there, just gonna clean the whole thing because it's a bit nasty. A lot shinier now and we let it dry. The pins there, normally I would go in and uh, hit that with contact cleaner, electric cleaner, but I think in this case I'm going to use the mass airflow sensor cleaner also on those. For the other end though I will use the contact cleaner on that. Again this is a uh, contact cleaner. It is specifically for electronic connections. So I'm just going to get it up inside right there. That's it. 20 minutes later. So you know, that's all clean and shiny and dry. I'm going to plunk it back in place. You want to make sure that you put it in the proper orientation. So if you see this on the Mark IV, that little intake, that needs to go toward the intake side. So it's blowing this way. A lot of them have arrows on them that will help you with the directionality. I don't see an arrow on this one, but I know it needs to blow that direction in order to work correctly. back on there nice and clipped and happy. There we go. Nice. So now the trick is, since I've cleaned that and that, I, I can do one of two things. I can either run the car and use VC, VCDS to force the readiness codes, or I can let the car sit overnight so it's completely cold, do a cold two minute warm up in the morning, let it warm up naturally. It'll go through all the checks for the secondary air in the morning. 
I know that the other seven readiness codes are good. So that's the only one I'm waiting on. And assuming that we have now got everything in proper order, I should have all eight readiness codes by the time I get to work tomorrow. And then I can go smog the car and we are good to go. I will report back and let you know how it went. But wait, there's more. Incidentally, we also have to smog the Corrado right now. Uh, but wait, there's more, yeah. So it's also time to do the Corrado and the Corrado is an interesting beast because she does have the supercharger kit. And um, I do have the carb numbers for the VR6 supercharger kit that AMS sold back in the late 90s. AMS no longer exists. Um, yeah, it's interesting. We're going to see. We'll see if she passes smog with the supercharger. I'm actually not concerned about the supercharger. What I'm concerned about is 213,000 miles on the original catalytic converter. Two years ago when I tried to smog with no supercharger, just naturally aspirated, she only passed just by the skin of her teeth. Very, very barely made it through. So your guess is as good as mine as to whether or not she's going to pass. She does run very clean, but we'll see. So I'll report back on the Corrado as well. You can place your bets in the comments whether you think either of them are going to pass smog. The R32 should pass smog. That's not a big deal. She's not highly modified or anything crazy. The Corrado, yeah, high compression motor, head work, cams, supercharger. Yeah, there's some stuff going on there. So we'll see. I'll let you know. Like, subscribe, share. I'll see you sometime soon. Bye-bye. And on that terrible disappointment, <laughs> it's time to say goodbye. We'll be back.